response to Paul's message. The Bible says the Lord opened her heart to respond to Paul's message. And this is um, an account right before verses 6 through 10. It's an account of a very rocky start to Paul's second missionary journey. At the end of chapter 15, we see him and Barnabas have had a sharp dispute. They've split ways. And in the uh, verses 6 through 10, Paul, Paul is wants to go into Asia to spread the gospel, but the Bible says the Holy Spirit wasn't allowing him to go into Asia, and so he, he goes from place to place, and the, the Spirit of God isn't letting him go, and so he must be, uh, you know, this is my imagination, kind of thinking into it, but he traveled hundreds of miles, so he must be frustrated. Lord, where are you taking me? You've given me, you've called me to be a light to the Gentiles, but you're not letting me go places. You know, what, where are you leading me? And finally, as we read, he, he receives a vision from a Macedonian man, and he goes uh, forward to Philippi. And when he gets there, so all of this must have taken time. There wasn't vehicles and airplanes like there are now. So he, I imagine Paul to be a, a, a little bit discouraged as a missionary, you know? And uh, when he gets to Philippi, he looks for a synagogue, because that was his practice. He would go to a synagogue and share the gospel among the Jews. And in order to have a synagogue, you have to have 10 Jewish men, and there weren't 10 Jewish men in the city, so he went to the river where there were women gathered there. And this was the beginning of Paul's second missionary journey. So as I was thinking of these things, I thought each of these must have brought a, a bit of frustration to Paul, maybe a season of, of discouragement to the greatest missionary in Christian history. And here is where Lydia's faithfulness and service must have brought great encouragement to one of um, to history's greatest apostle in, in one of his times of need. And so first I saw in Lydia's life her faithfulness and her service being a great ministry to a minister, to a missionary, to someone who was serving the Lord and maybe tired and weary. The second place that we can, we can see in scripture is her household. The Bible says in one sentence, her house, when the members of her household were baptized, she invited us into her home. What a powerful se sentence. Her, Rome, her, her, in, her role in her home influenced her family to come to the Lord, and their souls were saved for eternity. We don't know who was all part of her family. We only know that her entire household was baptized, and perhaps even for generations to come, there were believers from her family because of her faith. So we see, first, her response to Paul, her encouragement to Paul. Secondly, her influence and her influential role in her home. And, and finally, the, the last thing that's mentioned about her is that she persuaded them to come and meet in their home. And you might not catch this right away, but this is the first church on European soil that began, and it was in the home of this woman, Lydia, this faithful witness. She says, if you consider me a believer in the Lord, come and stay at my house, and she persuaded us. And if you look on in the end of chapter 16, <laughs> in verse 40, it says, after Paul and Silas came out of prison, they went to Lydia's house, where they met with the brothers and encouraged them. So by then, it's gone from just a group of gathering of women and her family to brothers and a church that's, that's been formed. And we read from studying Philippians and, and, the, and the history that there was a great church that was started there. And that was the first church in the Western world. And that's the reason that we are here today, because of an influence of, the, of, of Christianity in the West. And it really began in the home of this, this woman, this faithful witness. And so I guess what had really encourages me personally in the life of Lydia is that she was an ordinary woman. She had a business, she had a trade, she had a gifting that God gave her. She was a, a, a businesswoman, an average woman, but her strength was in her faithfulness, her hospitality, her service, and her witness as a woman. And so I want to ask you, dear sisters in Christ gathered together, are you hungry to serve the Lord in your generation, to be a witness for the Lord in your home or in the world around you? I know my heart is always hungry for that. Lord, let my life be a witness wherever I am in whatever capacity. My husband always says that uh, God doesn't ask us to do great things for him. He asks us to be faithful in the small things. And in Lydia's life, the, the, all of these small things added to something great that we read about now many, many years later. 
She was faithful. She responded to Paul's message. She opened up her home. We see hospitality and service. In just less than five verses, we, we learn great things from this woman. So let me ask you today, can, you, can your life and your hospitality be an encouragement to someone? Maybe your pastor or ministers of the gospel that you encounter. Maybe those on the front lines of, of the mission field where the Lord brings along your path. Maybe, maybe that's a way you can serve in hospitality and, and encouragement. Can you shine brightly for the Lord as a wife or a mother, a daughter? Like Lydia's influence over her own family, can you give your life to imparting your relationship with Christ to your children? I can't speak as a mother yet, but from my perspective as a daughter, I can say my life has been shaped by my mother's faith and her prayers and her witness in front of me for almost 30 years. So can, you, can your children look back and point to their mother's witness as a place where they make Christ on their own? We, we don't know how far our witness can go. I'm sure Lydia never realized that her story would be written in history, that her small decisions would alter the course of a continent. And we don't know what our service and love toward those God has placed in our path, people we bump into on a regular basis, maybe people you work with in your job places, maybe members in your own home. What if, what if God has called and appointed them for great tasks in his kingdom and you have the chance to open your home to them or cook a meal in front of them, of serving them, of being a faithful witness? I just want to leave you with that thought. My prayer today is that as women of God, that we would follow the example of Lydia as a sister of, in Christ from centuries ago, the legacy legacy that she left us in the scripture, there's great things we can learn from that, and I want to challenge us all to get today to, to really follow in those footsteps and be wherever the Lord has planted us in whatever capacity that we can be a witness for him, and that through that, maybe many, many would come to know, to know the Lord. May the Lord bless you with these words. Thank you so much for that word. May the Lord continue to bless you and to prosper your ministry.